Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to the Jaeger maintainer talk. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of cool stuff. I'm Jonah Cowell, and I'm also joined on stage by uh, Joe Elliott. Nice to meet you all. And uh, we're going to be covering a lot of things about Jaeger, open telemetry, uh, where the project is going, kind of where it is. As you know, Jaeger is a graduated project, one of a handful. Uh, very mature and uh, well adopted in the ecosystem. Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, I'm Joe, and you can tell by the images up here, I work on Jaeger. I'm a Jaeger maintainer. I work at Grafana, and that's a very terrible picture of my bike. I like to uh, bike around uh, my city quite a bit. And um, I don't know if you found your bike at the fountain or... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just walked out and picked it up. It's been my bike ever since. And I'm Jonah Cowell. I'm the CTO at Logs.io. Also work on Jaeger, among other projects. I do a lot of diving because I live in a nice place for that. So that's what I tend to do when I'm not working. Uh, some photos I've shot recently um, underwater. And um, yeah, so in the agenda today, we're going to talk about distributed tracing in Jaeger, a little bit deeper into open telemetry, and then kind of as we go through, we'll get a little bit deeper into certain features that we've built out. We're going to do a really quick live demo of some of the stuff that we're doing. Hopefully, I'm going to do it over Wi-Fi too, which will be really fun. And then uh, I doubt we're going to have time for questions, but come up after. We also have a Slack channel, which we'll hit on right at the end. So with that, I'm going to dive into uh, a really quick intro for those of you that are just getting started or maybe don't know a lot about distributed tracing in Jaeger. Um, as Joe gets deeper into what you can do with open telemetry, uh, we wanted to just talk a little bit about a few of the semantics. So a trace is an end-to-end -end transaction going through lots of different hops and different microservices. Each of those hops or steps that are going through is a span. And that's kind of a little teeny piece of the end-to-end -end transaction. Inside the span, you can have all kinds of metadata. Uh, you can have tags, you can attach logs, you can attach all kinds of interesting data that's going to help you either do analytics or troubleshooting. Um, and there's just a lot of uh, different use cases and interesting stuff you can do with tracing, uh, which is kind of the most advanced signal in uh, telemetry today, uh, in general, and observability. Um, so with that, uh, kind of talk a little bit about the relationships. It's really important in a trace to understand how those spans all come together and roll into, uh, into what's actually happening with the end user or the API that's being used or exercised. And so here you can see some visualizations and you'll see more of them inside the Jaeger UI that explain how the different components of a trace come together and roll into that. So obviously inside the data itself, there are pointers that say, this is the root span where I came from and this is the next hop that I'm going to and kind of shows the different pieces in the relationship. And now what you can do is you can also calculate the data off of that to understand errors and latency and, and do all kinds of cool stuff that we're going to talk about a little bit later. And here's the visualization you get when you use Jaeger. So uh, if you do install Jaeger, we make it really easy to get started. We'll talk about that. And you can get these cool visualizations of the tracing data that you're looking at. And with that, Joe's going to talk, talk a little bit about auto instrumentation. Cool. So uh, we're going to talk about the open telemetry clients. Uh, those of you who are already using Jaeger may have, in the past year or so, seen maybe a message or a warning like this in the docs or on your Jaeger client. So about a year ago, Jaeger deprecated all of its clients for all of the major languages in favor of the open telemetry clients. Uh, the community decided to kind of converge on the open telemetry clients as they uh, kind of implemented the final features that Jaeger already supported, the final one kind of being remote sampling, if you're familiar with that. So uh, Jaeger clients have been deprecated, and the uh, community is encouraged to move to the open telemetry clients, which now are feature complete with what you could used to be able to do with your, uh, with your Jaeger clients. 
Um, the good news here is that there is very, very wide language support for Jaeger. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's a super, I'm sorry, for the open telemetry clients, which I'm pretty sure is a superset of the originally supported languages in Jaeger. I was surprised to see, for instance, Swift is supported. So for all of you, you know, writing your backend applications in Swift, however many of that is, you can also instrument with Jaeger. But you'll see some of the major players up there like .NET and Java and Go and Node and all of these kind of uh, major backend languages and platforms all already supported by OpenTelemetry. Um, I'll also point out that all of these languages also have a shim between open tracing and open telemetry. So if you're using Jaeger, Jaeger implements the open tracing shim as well. And it's quite possible you can very easily swap out the Jaeger backend in your client for the open telemetry implementation of open tracing with maybe little or no code changes. So open tracing is a uh, older standard that was an API standard Jaeger implemented. Open telemetry also supports that standard. And I have a good link in the bottom of this slide. I'll also say over my part of this presentation, uh, there's a lot of languages and a lot of details um, and it's impossible to get into all of it. So I've tried to include links in all the slides the PDF we've attached to the schedule uh, should have this, all of these links. I encourage you to go get that and use this presentation as a jumping off point to you know, get into the details of your own systems. Another piece of good news is that the configuration of uh, open telemetry clients is very similar to the configuration of your Jaeger clients, all through environment variables. And in a lot of cases, there's even kind of like a one-to-one -one mapping. So like service name, there's service names in open telemetry. The, you know, the data model is very similar. So a lot of this configuration is just going to be able to translate right over. And this is, of course, not exhaustive. I just wanted to show a few examples of, uh, of environment variables you are likely using to configure your Jaeger clients. And you know, showing you that all of these same options are going to exist over here for your open telemetry clients. So we have like sampling uh, options, of course, is very important in tracing. And you can see open telemetry is, of course, going to support that as well. Um, you know, your Jaeger agent host, where you're pointing your agent, uh, the propagation, which is very important. We're going to talk about that in a second. All of these kind of uh, configuration points should be available in open telemetry or something similar. And again, that link at the bottom has every environment variable and every silly little combination of parameters you can pass. Um, to talk about the autoness of this instrumentation, everybody gets excited about tracing auto instrumentation because sometimes tracing can feel a little manual. Uh, we wanted to talk about what open telemetry is capable of in this case. And I have used maybe three or four of the different open telemetry clients at different times. And I think uh, the, the good news here is that open telemetry generally does a good job in its clients of meeting the expectations of the community uh, and the frameworks that they're serving. So in Java, there's often an expectation of heavy auto instrumentation. Uh, Spring in particular has a lot of hooks where you can do what you want after events like HTTP calls and other events in your, in your framework. Uh, .NET also kind of has a history of some of this, a lot of these powers. Whereas maybe Go is a language where people expect a little bit more manual work, a little bit more manual coding. So in my experience, diving into these languages, I'd say uh, your expectations as a developer is hope are hopefully met by the community. And I'd certainly communicate that back if you're struggling. And another really good point here is um, for all of these languages, even ones I don't develop in day to day, there are really good getting started documentation. Every language, if you just jump into the, uh, the link there at the bottom, you'll find your own language, hopefully. And there'll be like the, you know, hello world style getting started guide. And you hopefully in an hour or two can have very basic instrumentation set up and you can be writing to Jaeger and you can start seeing that, you know, uh, open telemetry and Jaeger is going to work just fine. And you can migrate, find a migration path for your existing applications. There's also, uh, just wanted to add, there's actually a new Go auto instrumentation based on eBPF that's pretty interesting. It's super new. But I think we're going to see more and more innovation of using things like eBPF to do more automated data collection. So definitely keep watching the profiling and eBPF with open telemetry because it's really interesting stuff and it'll make it even easier and deeper data collection. Sorry yep. to chime in. No. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, trace propagation is also going to be very important. So you have like a fleet of applications and they're all using the Jaeger clients and they're using what are called the Jaeger headers probably. 
So Jaeger uh, propagates trace information with the headers. And, uh, if you don't deep dive into tracing, you might not know this, but you're going to need to know this real soon if you start rolling out open telemetry clients, because open telemetry by default communicates with W3C headers. Jaeger by default communicates with Jaeger headers, and there is some overlap there. Most open telemetry clients also support Jaeger headers. Most Jaeger clients can talk with W3C headers, but as you start rolling out some of the first apps with open telemetry, you might find some traces are broken. You might need to go look at how you're propagating header values, maybe double check and standardize on one of the two, whatever is more, uh, whatever's easier for your particular environment. And then you can get your full traces as they pass through both, you know, your Jaeger instrumented applications and your open telemetry instrument applications. Uh, and finally, I wanted to show an example of auto-instrumentation. So these are some screenshots from a Java auto-instrumented app that I threw together. Uh, I'm not a Java developer. All I did was <laughs> take a RESTful application that uh, you know, has Git and post endpoints and then hits a relational database. We've all seen this kind of application a million times. And then I threw the Java agent jar. Uh, I just linked it using the, uh, using the instructions on the getting started page in OpenTelemetry. And I was immediately able to get some basic tracing going. I had very nice attributes from both my HTTP side as well as my database side. I'm not sure how visible that is. Hopefully it's okay. Um, but you can see that there are the HTTP method, the HTTP path, the URL, the uh, HTTP version that was in use are all automatically being uh, added as attributes to my spans and my trace. And then on the database side, I was kind of surprised to also see a lot of deep information about the database call automatically added with no code changes. I'm seeing like the database query string, uh, the name of the database, the name of the table that was accessed, the kind of operation that was performed. And uh, it was really a rich set of information for almost no effort. I really made no code changes, just linked that jar file and it was ready to go. So if you are in the Java Spring world, you might have some nice surprises on your, the ease of moving to OpenTelemetry um, and maybe also some of the other more auto-instrumented auto kind of languages. Uh, next, let's talk about, I'm moving to OpenTelemetry. I have these clients going. I, maybe I found my migration path and I'm happy with my setup. What, what kind of pipelines are available now that I have OpenTelemetry and I'm more comfortable in that ecosystem along with my existing Jaeger backend? So the good news here is that the OpenTelemetry collector and the clients speak every Jaeger protocol. So the Jaeger agents expect one of two protocols, which you might be aware of, Thrift Compact or Thrift Binary. There's the port numbers up there. The collector supports one of two protocols. Normally, it's gRPC from the agents. Uh, and there's also, a lot of us might have a Kafka queue in our Jaeger pipeline, in our trace pipeline. Um, the open telemetry collector can read and write all of these protocols, and it can write to the Kafka queue in the formats that Jaeger expects. So that means you can really mix and match open telemetry components along with your uh, Jaeger components in almost any combination you want. Um, I also put a little uh, link up there. It's something important about the collector itself is there's two, uh, there's two distributions of the collector. There's one, the core distribution does not have Jaeger support, but there's one called Contrib, and I've linked the, uh, the Docker image there. The Contrib uh, open telemetry collector does have Jaeger support, so that's the one you're probably going to be using along with your Jaeger uh, uh, ecosystem. Um, the reason we might consider using, that's also probably impossible to read, the reason we might consider using the Open Telemetry Collector along with our Jaeger pipeline is the Open Telemetry Collector has a lot of really nice uh, processors and ability to mutate our spans as they move through it. You might find that uh, some of these nice uh, abilities, for instance, I have highlighted uh, a processor called the Redaction Processor. And you can use it to look for maybe PII or other patterns, other kind of information you don't want to pass into your backend, and it will redact that. But there's other processors that will add or delete attributes. There's processors that will decorate spans with additional metadata. Uh, the Open Telemetry Collector is very rich in its ability to modify and work with uh, trace data. So I would encourage you to explore the collector uh, as you are kind of getting into the Open Telemetry ecosystem. Um, because the collector supports, like we said, all of the same protocols that the, uh, that the, the Java, or sorry, the Jaeger pipeline supports, we can really kind of mix and match how we want. So I have over here in the green box the Jaeger backend, the collector writing to a database, and the querier reading from that database. 
And then on the left side, we have our applications, and they're instrumented now with the OpenTelemetry client. I can use the Jaeger agent like I always have, because the OpenTelemetry open client can write directly to it, or I could swap that out with the OpenTelemetry collector. There's, you know, these applications can do, both can do the same thing. They can both read the same protocols. They can both write to the collector successfully. So you have a lot of flexibility in your pipeline. Um, a lot of people use queuing in, a, in, a, in Jaeger, and like we said before, because the open telemetry collector can put uh, trace data in the Kafka queue in the format Jaeger expects, we can use open telemetry collectors in this situation as well. So my client, maybe I'm writing to a mix of the Jaeger pipeline and the open telemetry cl collector pipeline, uh, and then I can still use my Kafka queue, I'm pulling with my Jaeger ingester, and now I'm writing into the database like I always have. So there's a lot of flexibility here, there's a lot of power, a lot of, uh, a lot of configuration, and a lot of documents to read. I would recommend digging in and seeing what you can start doing with your trace pipeline. And so what, the reason why you may want to move from simple to advanced is either scale reasons, resiliency reasons, Mm -hmm. or other kinds of business requirements that you may have. But that's typically why people ask Kafka, uh, add Kafka. Mm -hmm. One of the common questions we get all the time is, my collector's overloaded or my backend is overloaded, how do I help? How do we help? And in the Jaeger channel, we're gonna tell you, you have to look at where the pressure is and probably add some kind of queue, some kind of back pressure mechanism. I mean, you really have to scale this stuff mm -hmm. as you see fit. <laughs> yep. So, uh, final slide for me, just kind of trying to be silly here. The point being, because these applicate or these uh, these two processes are so easily interchangeable, you know, you can do almost anything you want. This particular pipeline is highly unrecommended, but if you wanted to repeatedly write from collectors to agents to Kafka and back, you can do it. Uh, and maybe you have some bizarre business reason to go about building a pipeline as complicated as this. Um, but yeah, with that, I think we're heading back to Jonah. Sure. Cool. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about, Joe mentioned the processors. There's so many powerful ones and new ones being built constantly. Like you just started building some of the cool things that show uh, architectures, trucks. service maps, yep. exactly. These are all processors. So one of the cool things that uh, we built over the, new, the last year was actually a new processor, and I'm gonna talk about that and how it comes forward in, uh, in Jaeger. So Jaeger is a distributed tracing system. As you saw in the screenshots, it can help you debug and understand where your transactions are going. But a lot of people today need APM. I want performance monitoring, performance data. So how do we move from distributed tracing to understanding performance? It's about introducing new signals. Aside from traces, we also need metrics. And we need to understand that so that we can look at my services slowing down. I'm seeing more errors, trending data, this type of thing we need metrics on. So we decided to build some additional components. The first piece is the span metrics processor. And so you can see here, and I'm gonna use my cool little thing, is we've, we've built, uh, we basically built, as the traces come into the open telemetry collector, we then can send them through this processor, which not only sends the data to Jaeger, but it also creates metrics in the process. So we're actually able to derive metrics from the traces. And you'll see why this is important in a second because then we can now start surfacing these metrics and give you information about what's happening in the application. So inside your open telemetry collector, this is a typical configuration that, that you would see for the span metrics processor and how it fits into the pipeline. In the top is the definition of the processor, and you can see exactly how it's calculating the different buckets that it's, that it's collecting and how it's looking at the data in terms of breaking it up into metrics. And down in the bottom, you can see how this fits into a pipeline where you're calling the trace metrics processor, and sorry, it's so small, within the uh, pipeline right here. And the result of this is that we then generate metrics from these traces, and we're able to do cool things like show you the metric data from your applications without any additional instrumentation. And I'm gonna show you this in a live demo, but we can show these Prometheus metrics 
You can visualize them in Grafana. You can alert on them in Alert Manager. You can use any Prometheus compatible backend with this feature. Um, and so that includes, obviously, Prometheus, Cortex, Thanos, Mimir, M3DB, uh, you name it. Anything that does PromQL will work with this and has the right exporter in open telemetry. And I'm going to show you a really quick demo of how this looks in Grafana, just so that you can see. Hopefully, I'm not logged out. So uh, we built a couple of dashboards here. One is a service performance monitoring dashboard. And really quickly here, we can look at the total number of spans. We're looking at six hours. Latency by service. We can actually look at the breakdown of all the metrics. Um, and then each particular service, you can actually see my catalog service, the latency, the spans, the error rates. Um, and then the second really cool dashboard is the service level view. So if your team has a particular service, like I own the front end of my application, you can actually look at uh, all of the particular metrics for your individual service. And these are just coming right off Prometheus, um, broken down by, uh, by the operation. So it's pretty powerful to have this data. Uh, available to the team, because uh, these metrics are very tied to your business in particular. And the second thing that we did, aside from creating the metrics, is we made them usable inside the Jaeger UI. So when you run Jaeger, you can actually see uh, in this new monitoring tab how it's visualized. And I'm going to show you a live demo of this as well. So in Jaeger, if you haven't updated recently, you'll notice that there is a new tab right here called Monitor. When you click on Monitor, what it's going to do is you pick the service that you want, and it's going to show you the latency. And you see here we've got uh, percentile buckets. Uh, hopefully, it's not too small. The error rate, the request rate. And then I can actually go down and see the different operations. And let's say I'm starting to see, oh, look, here, this is showing 11% errors on my order service. I can actually drill in directly by clicking on that link, and it's going to pull up the specific uh, traces related to that service. So just give it a second. So these are the, the traces specifically related to the service. So the idea here is uh, it, it gives you a little bit of a monitoring workflow. Obviously, we don't do alerting in Jaeger yet. I mean, you know, that is something that uh, if anyone wants to contribute or work on, <laughs> we definitely would love to have alert manager integration. And there's all kinds of cool things that, that we can do with this data. Um, so that's kind of some of the new stuff uh, that we've done. Um, so I did want to also hit on uh, a couple of new features. And for those of you that were at the keynote this morning, I summarized these in a 45-second video, <laughs> so it might be a little redundant. Um, one of the things that we did that allowed for some of what Joe talked about was, was adding, I think you did the work for adding OTLP support. No, Yuri, Yuri did. Oh, Yuri did. I said I'd do it for like a year and never got to it, and he finally <laughs> got fed up with me and did it, I think. <laughs> yeah, so, so right now, Jaeger takes open telemetry line protocol. That's the raw uh, protocol for open telemetry. So you can send trace data directly from anything speaking open telemetry into the collector, which then gets stored onto disk. The other piece, which Joe mentioned, was uh, adaptive sampling. We added that uh, specifically into open telemetry. And do you want to talk a little bit about that one? Because sure. you, you did more on that. That's the one I actually did. Yeah. Uh, so adaptive <laughs> sampling uh, is a a new feature, sampling feature in Jaeger that allows you to adjust your sample rates in response to your volume or your trace volume dynamically. So for a long time, Jaeger has been able to remote sample, which means like pull a document remotely from a remote source and then use that to adjust sample parameters, but it was always a static document. Uh, what this new feature, Adaptive Sampling, does is it will watch your trace data, and if maybe one particular service or one particular endpoint starts overwhelming your backend, you can dynamically, or the system will dynamically reduce the sample rate for that particular endpoint or service, 
and uh, allow your backend not to fall over. Uh, also, if the maybe the, uh, the throughput of a particular endpoint goes down, you could increase your sample rate so you have a larger percentage of traces from that particular service. So it's just like a dynamic, uh, an ability to dynamically adjust your sample rates based on your current traffic. Yeah, and there's a lot of getting back to those processors and open telemetry. There's a lot of really interesting sampling strategies you can implement. And sampling and tracing is a really important topic and a big talk unto itself. Uh, the next feature that was added is you saw the kind of tabular views in Jaeger. We actually had a community con contribution for flame graphs, which is kind of another interesting way to look at the trace data. Um, Joe mentioned earlier that the Jaeger SDKs are deprecated, so that's just another, I guess it's not a feature, but. <laughs> it's like an anti-feature. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we like cleaning things up, so uh, that's, that's important too. Um, so some of the things that we wanna do today in Jaeger, those of you that are users, there's a few different dependency graphs. It would be nice to have one, and potentially uh, one of the other things that we've discussed is using those new service views that you've been working on yep. to generate that. Because today you have to run Spark to generate the dependency views in Jaeger, or you can run like we do at my company, we run Kafka Streams to generate those. But either way, it's more stuff for the team to manage and run. So trying to simplify that is definitely a good idea uh, and uh, something that we need to do. Something Jonah was hinting at there is there, we talked about those processors in the collector. There is a new processor called the service map processor, I think, which generates service graph metrics. Uh, and then uh, Grafana can currently visualize those. I don't know if there's any other place I can visualize them, but they're open telemetry metrics and they're an op open standard at this point. So, you know, you can use those metrics yourself to generate visualizations. Grafana can also do it. Yeah, so the more context we can add onto those graphs, the visual views, the, the more useful the tool becomes. And obviously that's super important uh, in when you're doing troubleshooting or monitoring. Uh, the other piece is uh, eventually we've had stops and starts on the second major bullet here, which is how do we move away from the Jaeger collector, which today writes the data to the back end and implement something like a, a pared down open telemetry collector instead. It's just less code for us to manage in the project and it's somewhat redundant. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, uh, one of the other maintainers, Pavel was working on this, but then he kind of took a break on it and I don't know where it is, but it's something that we wanna do as the project uh, matures and continues. So. More convergence with open telemetry is definitely the, the trend with Jaeger. Um, and we've got probably five minutes for any questions. So feel free to raise your hand and we will take the questions. Go ahead, Joe, pick. I think we did. One sec. Hi, thanks for the talk. Does the Go eVPF uh, collector that you mentioned, does that do automatic uh, context propagation? And yeah, they just added that into the project about two weeks ago. You'll wanna search for Keyval, K-E-Y-V-A-L is the little startup that built that and just do Keyval Go and you'll see it. Uh, we've tested it out uh, and it definitely works well and does context propagation with eBPF, which is really cool that they're able to do that. But that is cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, concur. That is very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it, I guess it's in the main OTEL repository now, so I stand corrected. Thank you. Thanks. Qu other questions? Sure. Uh, I guess in the green over there. Oh, or sorry, no, over here. You're next. Uh, uh, definitely a, a great talk, Joe and Jonah. So it definitely helped to understand uh, different things in open telemetry and Agar. But uh, what's the future of Agar? So today we definitely love the Agar UI and the storage integrations are really good for Cassandra Elasticsearch. And uh, recently the GRBC integration has been added. Uh, but what's the future for Agar and wh how do we uh, separate out the boundaries between open telemetry and Agar? 
This one's always a debate. I mean, we would love to have one database, right, ideally to do this, but everyone kind of wants something different. So we have people that love Cassandra and use that, and people that want to use Elastic or OpenSearch. And then obviously there's other data stores like, uh, like uh, what is it, Prom Scale or something. no, Time, time Scale DB, I believe was. I think that guy right there works on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's other options. So they're compatible. There's a bunch of pluggable things. And I know you're working on some stuff on Tempo, right, to do? I don't know. I've considered it, but no, I've not done any work on it. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned the gRPC plugin, which is a great thing to mention. So uh, there is a gRPC backend, so you could write a plugin for any backend you wanted at this point. Um, and I think there might be a proto, well, whatever. I'm not sure. Definitely a gRPC backend, which allows for extension. Yeah, so I, there's a lot of backend options. And uh, I don't know, It's the test suites get crazy right now for us to test every one of the backend types. Uh, and I'm not sure where that's going to go, but yep. Yeah. Sorry. I think we're back here. Yep. Great talk. I have two questions for you. First one is, do you um, have plans to introduce other streaming solution other than Kafka, for example, Nuts, uh, Jetstream? And the second question is, um, do your metrics um, also provide exemplars? Um, for example, the trace ID, yeah. so that let's say if I have a Grafana dashboard, I can see a spike, I can click on that spike and go to the particular trace graph. Sure. Does the Open Tele Telemetry Collector support exemplars? Uh, Is it remote write exemplars too? It, I believe that the, uh, the collector does, but in this case, the, uh, the individual traces don't really matter on the metric itself because you already know the context because the, uh, the dimensions that you define in the processor, for example, the path or whatever tag you decide to use, is already going to show you the examples for the metric. So it's not necessarily relevant, but I guess we could, if you want to contribute something that puts uh, you know, a trace ID in there as an exemplar, that's totally possible. I don't see why not. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know the, off the top of my head what the open telemetry support for exemplars right now is. I'm getting a thumbs up from Jurassi, so yes, <laughs> open telemetry supports exemplars. <laughs> so I would uh, presume that right, we could, if it doesn't already, re re generate exemplars out of the or out of the span metrics processor, which would m make for a compelling use case. Like it's really nice to see metrics generated from your traces and very quickly be able to jump over. So uh, I would review the docs. If it's not there, it's probably an easy add, frankly. It might be a good good first issue and that, know, for that repo. And that view traces button basically brings you to the traces related to the metric anyway. So it's already kind of in there. But um, Was there a second part of the question? I kind of missed the beginning piece. Did you hear the? I don't know. I'm trying I to had remember. a second question. If you are planning to support a different streaming solution like Nuts or Nuts Jetstream instead of Kafka, uh, there are no plans at this moment to support other ones. The current implementation is kind of like a very bespoke Kafka implementation. There's no, I don't think there's a general shim there. So uh, a new implementation will require some effort from someone else. If you are interested in uh, contributing something like that, I would start an issue first and discuss with the maintainers like how you want to implement it and we could talk about it. I think the collector, the open telemetry collector also only supports Kafka. I'm not sure on that. Yeah, I'm going to look at Jira. It does for there. sure. <laughs> it definitely does, yeah. Okay. Um, and I think we might have time for one last one. Yeah, yeah we'll take one more. Uh, thank you guys for the presentation. Great job. Uh, so at my company, we use .NET. Uh, we create .NET APIs. Uh, and that's a couple months ago, or a couple years ago, actually, or a year ago, whatever. Um, we were trying to get Jaeger set up, but uh, we didn't have the auto instrumentation yet. Uh, and I'm curious, does the auto instrumentation mean that there is no application uh, code changes needed and we can just set the environment variables via uh, config maps or whatever to instrument the app without the developers themselves having to uh, pull in some type of package? Yeah, that's, that's correct. So there's a few ways to, to instrument in .NET and you can either install the instrumentation or it can be included as a package inside 
your build if you're going somewhere that's serverless in .NET, basically. So it depends on how you want to deploy. But the auto instrumentation is there. There's no code changes needed. And there's a great team uh, in that community uh, that are, that's working on it. And uh, we're happy to take questions after. Also, uh, happy for you to jump on our Slack, which is up on the screen. Uh, we're, we're definitely always there and collaborating. And we're always looking for contributors and folks to participate and users to come and talk. So uh, thank you very much for coming. And uh, great to see everyone at KubeCon. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.